Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1531. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to use dynamic arrays to convert a column of records into a proper data set. Now, the dynamic arrays and this new Excel calculation engine are only in Office 365. Now, this task of going from a column of records to a proper data set can be done many ways. I have other videos both in Power Query and with formulas of how to do this. But if we go over to Sheet 1531, this trick comes from the Power Query and Dynamic Array Formula Master Bill Scissors. Now here's our task. We have records, and for some crazy reason, they're listed in a column. These field names should really be listed across the top in the first row. And then this is in one row as a single record, and then the next record, and so on. Now, actually, with these dynamic array formulas, it's going to be surprisingly easy. So although we can do this with other formula methods in Power Query, this one's going to give us a run for our money. Now, I first need to take the field names, and there they are, and transpose them. So that's all I do. Since this is the new Excel engine, transpose delivers a horizontal range. So when I hit Enter, it automatically spills. Remember, the formula lives only in one cell, and the remaining cells are just listed to be polite in gray. But there's really no formula there. If you double click, there's nothing there. But of course, if you refer to it, it's polite. And of course, you can click on these cells and format them. Now we need to extract from this column and get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the first row, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in the second row, and so on. Now, Control down arrow. We have a little over 100 rows. And we are going to use the index function. And the array will be this whole column. But i got to show you just a small example here. One, two. All I'm going to do is highlight for array. Those are the items we'd like to look up. But write in comma row number. I'm going to type out some array syntax. Curly brackets always house the array. And notice, what do we have? One, two, three, four rows. So I'm going to put 1, comma, 2, semicolon, 3, comma, 4, close curly brackets. Well, this is proper array syntax. Comma means a column. Semicolon means go down a row. So even though that's in the row number argument, that's because it's looking up rows here. But when we put it in this form, we're going to get a table, two columns, two rows. And because we're in the modern Excel, close parentheses, when I hit Enter, it spills. You actually can do this in older versions. You just have to highlight the cells in advance and use Control-Shift-Enter. Now, the only key is that I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but in rows and then in columns. 1 to 5, 6 to 7. No problem. We can do that with the sequence function. Now, we need to know how many rows are in this data set. Once we know that, we can divide it by the number of columns. And that will tell us how many rows we have in this proper data set. And then, of course, we know how many columns there are, 5. So inside of sequence, all we have to do is give it the number of rows and columns, leave the last two arguments off, and it will automatically sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So in rows, I'm going to count how many rows are over in this column. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. Close parentheses. If I F9, that says 105. Well, 105 divided by rows, and I could highlight the spilled array, but I'm going to highlight the first five field names over here. Close parentheses. So 105 divided by 5 will give us 21. That means 21 rows over here. Control Z. Now we're going to use the number of field names, Control C, comma, in the columns argument, Control V. 
close parentheses. When I spill this, it gives me minus the number formatting, exactly what I need inside of index. So up in the actual cell with our formula, index, control, shift, down arrow, control, backspace, comma, array, rectangular sequence of the proper row numbers. And so when I spill this, there it is, from a column of records to a proper data set. Now, over here, we did not have empty cells between records. Sometimes that's the case. We could easily amend our formula. We can see we have empty cells between our records. Inside of the array argument, these are the values we want to extract. We take filter, and we include only the rows where the values are not equal to 0. And also, when we count the total rows in this data set, we have to use filter in the rows. So filter everything that's not 0. Also, before we had spilled arrays, we could totally do this. But that would be the formula, and you'd have to copy it across and down. All right, that is an awesome way to unwind records in a column, thanks to our online Excel team in Bill Sizzes. And of course, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.